Hey family, what's up? It's your girl, Miss Genesis Amaris Kemp, and with me today is Tim Branion. And let me tell you a little bit more about my guest since he is going to be in the hot seat with us. So Tim is a self-made millionaire and tech industry leader. He started his career as an airman in the United States Air Force, but soon realized that wasn't the path he wanted to continue on. In 2011, with no formal education and only 8,000 in his bank account, he launched his first app. Um, This is amazing. Since then, Tim has launched hundreds of apps, developed hundreds of platforms, and directly supported other multi-million dollar organizations. He has scaled to millions of users across his various platforms globally. What's most What's more, he teaches others how to build towards their own freedom and wealth. His motto is, if I can do it, so can you. So with that, without further ado, let's welcome the man behind it all, Tim Branion. Oh, hey. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Now, I, that, let me first say I'm definitely uh, blessed to have my team. I might be the face or the name, but man... I said, I stand on the shoulders of giants. A lot of my, my developers bring the ideas to life. Right. So I'm, I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> I know some stuff, but uh, I'm proudly the dumbest guy on the team. So if the truth is, if I can do it, so can you. So super cool. And thank you for sharing that, Tim. And before we dive into, you know, social media monetization, e-commerce, and some of the things that is part of your jam, I definitely want to give the audience a chance to connect with you in a fun and personal way. And do you know what's coming next? Have you done your due diligence or research? I, uh, I'm completely freestyling. I was slammed with calls today, so I'm not going to make it up. I am, I don't know what's going. I hope it's okay. I hope it's good. Okie dokie. So there are two options here on the show. We either do an icebreaker or a rapid fire 10 question game. What are you in the mood for? Let's do an icebreaker. Okie dokie. I want you to share something crazy or fun and interesting that you have done in your life that makes Tim Tim. Okay. Um, so something crazy. Or you could do fun and interesting. Or both. Okay. Uh, it's kind of interesting and crazy. So I, I've got a military background. And when I was 18 years old, I was deployed to the Middle East in a giant sandbox known as Iraq. <laughs> and I, I was in charge of uh, weapon systems. And um, yeah, I operated a, a turret. That's pretty crazy and wild, right? At 18 years old. I look back at that now and think, man, I was just a baby. But yeah, that was uh, that's <laughs> that was part of my early career. Interesting. So, out of all the branches, what made you pick Air Force? That's a great question. So, uh, for me, it I, I actually was signing up with the Army initially, and it was uh, <laughs> simply because the uniform looked the best, and I knew I needed an opportunity. Love it or hate it, it seemed like a great opportunity for me. I knew college wasn't necessarily the next phase for my life. I figured. Um, this could give me a great resume and I could be, uh, I, w- I would be more marketable as an employee if I went to the military, at least this was this idea. Um, and it wasn't until I had a conversation with my uncle that he, he was, you know, a serviceman and he broke down a little bit more in depth what each branch did. And then I opted into, uh, you know, joining the Air Force because it seemed like a little bit of a different uh, position in the mission. We'll put it that way. I wanted to have my coffee and my Wi-Fi and <laughs> have a little bit different experience. Um, I know I'm thankful for every branch of service and we give each other grief, but, but I chose the Air Force because uh, it made the most sense early on for, for the path that I wanted to go down uh, more so scholastically. <laughs> so you went with the glamour. <laughs> yeah, I went with the, the comfort. <laughs> Amazing. So how has your childhood into adulthood shaped the man that you are today? And did you know that you would be doing the work that you're doing now? Uh, man, I, I am a result. You know, I think we're all a result to some extent of our experiences and our reaction to those experiences and choices, right? We, we are um, constantly making decisions that decide our destiny. So I'm, I'm no different than any other any other person. So my, my upbringing was, uh, I grew up in a great home. Both of my parents were a loving family. We, 
we didn't have a lot of money. It was more so lower middle class, but we had everything else. All the other pillars of our life were, were in place. And uh, so early on, um, maybe I didn't have the same opportunities that some have as far as you know, going to college wasn't this thing that I, I could rely on my parents just cutting a check for. They didn't have that type of money. If things were meant to be, they were going to be up to me to, to make happen, whether by means of scholarship or, you know, hustling, working, making things happen. So, um, you know, ultimately, I, I didn't know that I was going to land in the technology space. Um, that was through the pursuit of, of freedom and, and restlessness and discontent in different chapters of my life have ultimately led me towards uh, the tech space as a means for what I would consider freedom or, or a life unlimited, you know, on my own terms. Super cool. And I really respect people within the tech space because that is an industry that I am eyeing only after being burnt out from being in oil and gas for 12 years. And it's not glamorous. Um, it's not sexy. The money you make can be sexy and you get sure. the perks and whatnot. But I was like, oh, I kind of like, you know, the Googlers or for the new people who are who go to Google, they're like the Nooglers and Microsoft and Apple and just kind of like the free spirited culture that they have and just overall. And my cousin's actually a software engineer and his life is pretty like cool. Just some of the projects he works on. And I was like, yeah. that's pretty, that's pretty dope, dude. Um, and like, you know, putting on FRCs, flame retardant clothing and working in a chemical plant. And I was like, why am I here? And my degree is supply chain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so did you ever, um, after you became a civilian again and got out of the Air Force, did and before you got into tech, did you go to college or did you just grass rooted or bootstrap what you're doing? Like yeah. walk us through that period. Sure, sure. So I, I uh, loved my military career. I excelled. I was a good employee or member of the, of the military. Um, but I saw where I was going to end up. I could see the rank progression and I could see in my career field where people were. Some were happy. A lot weren't, if they were being honest, like they weren't really fulfilled, like, like after 15, 20 years, not everybody, but, you know, I saw a lot of people that, that weren't really where I necessarily wanted to be or my idea for where I could be if I took a different path and a decision. So, so that's what I did. Um, I, I, I took a chance and I made it, I took a risk at that time because there was uncertainty. And I thought, man, I'm just, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to stay on this trajectory of, of what I considered growth and, and like forward momentum. And truthfully, when I got to school, I was, I was super prepared for something that wasn't there. Like I, I got to school and I felt like cattle. I felt like a lot of a lot of people were there because it was the next step, but no one really had an idea. Not very many people knew like why they were there. And uh, it, it, I just felt like I, I didn't really fit in. And very shortly, like during that time, I was just, I became depressed. I was like, man, I got to do something. I want to make money. I want to create opportunity. I want to be a part of a team again. I need to do something. So I jumped at the chance to do contracting. So I, I had a very short stint in school and I did really well. I'm proud of that, but I, I lasted maybe two semesters and I was like seeking, again, restlessness and discontent, seeking an opportunity to exit that environment. Um, and then I lived overseas. I did what I, what I did uh, similarly in the military, but overseas in Kuwait. So I lived in Kuwait and Dubai for about three and a half years, made a ridiculous amount of money and uh, got to a point where I just wasn't happy. I got to the point where I realized like money wasn't this thing that was going to provide me fulfillment or wealth on other pillars of my life, like time, freedom, family, relationships. Like I was literally just, just trading time for money. And I couldn't do that for more than three years. Um, and that's when, you know, I really started transitioning into an audit and thinking about, okay, what can I do? What is possible for me? What skills can I provide to, or services can I provide to the marketplace? What's realistic? And uh, so I racked my brain on everything from a hot dog stand to running a, 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 a you know, you name it. A, a, a hookah lounge was something that I was interested in. I had a green notebook filled with everything that, uh, you know, franchises. It was like this freedom notebook that I was just planning an escape. Um, and long story short, technology made sense 
apps made sense. I could, I could start it for a low cost. Um, and again, this was no formal education. I just had belief. It was more so belief on fire that um, I could start this thing for 15, 20 grand. It was a low upfront cost to do this app. I could provide services globally. I could create residual passive income through a subscription model of service. There was a multitude of ways to sell it. It didn't require I have a huge employee base. So managing people was this thing I was a little apprehensive of. And I like to limit risk. So uh, it just made sense. And it made sense enough that I, that I had belief that I could just start finding a development team. So I knew I, I can't code. And I, you know, I own a tech company now and I don't, I don't write code. I know enough to, to integrate and you know, I can communicate it well, but I'm not actually writing code. I think a lot of people get that misconstrued that you have to be an engineer, you have to be a developer in order to, you know, solve problems through technology. It's just not the case. It takes a wide array of people. Um, so anyway, uh, with Belief on Fire, I set out and I failed and then I had a really great win and I've had great wins and I've had great failures and I've stuck and stayed and, and given myself permission to fail enthusiastically throughout this whole journey. Now we're where we're at now. Um, and I'm still a student of the game and I'm still learning and developing and growing and um, yeah, investing. So super cool. And I love that you mentioned your failures as well as your success, because sometimes people may see Tim as just a successful person, but they don't know that you had the struggles, you had the pitfalls, you had like, you know, the moments where you've lost like a large sum of money, but then you had that comeback, but then you have to learn from the lessons and the fail, you have to learn the lessons and learn from the failures, pivot and move on. And now like you own a tech company, it's successful. So what is the name of that tech company? So it's Logic Square Technologies. Okay. And then I own, so that's the, 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 my actual tech firm where we build apps and software for people around the world. And then one of the platforms that I own specifically is TrueFans. Um, that's one that we're really excited about. It's popping right now um, <laughs> in a big way. So, so what does TrueFans give the end user? Yeah. So uh, we are the wholesome alternative to OnlyFans and Patreon. So we help content creators get paid ah. to post. and you know, our, our stamp and our flag in the ground is the fact that we're hundred percent invite only. We pay more, we pay faster. We just launched instant payments. Um, we have additional features and functions that no one else has, and we don't allow porn. So we, we became you know, the, the proud of the fact that we're the alternative platform for people that would love to have a member site, but don't necessarily want to be associated with that industry for, for whatever reason. So we saw that as an opportunity to serve that market. And that's what we've done. So it's, it's gone really well. We got lucky in a way with the pandemic uh, that we became this life preserver for, for companies and, and, and creative, cool individuals all over the world. And um, we've been since able to give them a, a stage, if you will, to share and broadcast who they are, what they've got going on and, and connect with their audiences. Super dope. I may have to check that out because I'm all about trying to get more sponsors for the podcast and really monetize so I could begin to diversify and just buy more equipment for the podcast. So now I want to jump into something that I think everyone is itching for nowadays. How do you really monetize on social media or with e-commerce without losing a sense of who you are through your yeah. brand? Because sometimes who you are and what your brand stands for, sometimes it could be a little bit misalignment and I think you are a part of your brand so you need to walk it like you talk it like the song by Migo says <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool song yeah. we should play that if you can edit it play it in and we'll get into it <laughs> or no, you can I, sing it for us Tim <laughs> oh boy no I don't want to be able to spot there um so yeah I, so it's a great question and I, so what I can share I talk to thousands of creators and the thing that sticks out to me and it's it's true is a lot of the ones that have become influential, a lot of the ones that have grown a massive following, they typically all say the same thing. They did it by accident. They did it by just being themselves. And that's what people are craving now more than ever is your authentic you. So having the boldness and having the ability to get out of your own way and get out of the way, your own thoughts of like, oh, what are other people gonna think? And uh, well, you know, I don't know if people will like this or editing and changing the way that you produce and make content and share your light uh, and your gift. That I think is, is a huge secret 
if you will, is just, you know, having the, the boldness to just share the, share who you are. You said it already, you are your own unique brand and you are your own, you know, talented individual and, and giving yourself permission to, to get out there and, and share that is, is step one. Um, now, are there strategies? Sure. Can you use certain hashtags? Sure. Are there, are there music? You know, if we're talking about TikTok, is there viral music that you can use? Sure. But I think it's more about number one, being your authentic self. Number two, um, giving your stuff away. Like for me, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a creator. Here's my strategy. My strategy is to build an audience. I, of course, I personally want to sell more software. I personally want to, um, you know, maybe do some more consulting or I, I want to bring more people to my platform. But I think it's an exchange. I think my ability to serve people will create that no like, and trust, will create that value proposition where now I, I'm becoming an authority or a subject matter expert in, in what I have and, and, and more importantly, what I'm giving. And then that's how you build your brand. And that's how you, you really become somebody that's, that's no liked and trusted is by giving it away. And, you know, not, of every training or teaching course that I've done, I go really high, high level into how to, you know, scale an e-commerce store, how to build a software or whatever. As soon as I'm done, and then this is true for everybody that's teaching something at a high level, 99% of people are going to ask, hey, can you do that for me? Can you, they're going to come and, and ask you anyway. So don't, don't have a scarcity mindset of, oh, I can't give this away because then other people will know it or my competitors will know it. No, it's fine. You need to be the teacher because who's better to get the answers from than the teacher or who's better to work with than the teacher, the authority. So that's, that's my other uh, challenge or my other suggestion is to be the authority, be the teacher, the giver of good. And, and you'll attract a lot of people and you'll become the go-to. Um, and then third, if I had to give a third, I feel like one, two, three is good. <laughs> so like third, yeah, third, um, man, uh, we're talking about monetization, right? So, so give it away, but, you know, may, have a system ready to, to monetize like the 10%, give away 90%, give it, give away a course, give away a book, give away everything that's going to, going to help somebody out. And then if they really want to take it a layer deeper, they need to get in touch with you personally for a one-on-one -on -one, or if they need to, they want you to consult with their business directly or they need you to build the product or the service, have a simple means in which they can do that. Um, and then you can fulfill that really well. And, and uh, you know, there's, there's a lot to unpack with that. I can't give exacts, but. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. I'm, follow, I'm following you. So like some people who, um, give like the sentiment says it's better to give than to receive so some people mm. will do their give via um, they'll have a lead magnet they'll have a click funnel they'll have a click bait so it's that low hanging fruit like whether it's a book a pdf or maybe it's a sample to a product that you have and then they test that out and they're like oh I really like this I really vibe it now I want more so they're like itching for more and then they move into maybe that medium value item until they're comfortable where they all they're already in your ecosystem and they have that credibility with you based on that no like and trust factor that now they're gonna be ready to pull the trigger on that big ticket item so that's one way and then the authenticity so like for me I'm gonna be completely honest y'all like I love wearing my hair straight my hair is naturally curly I love doing Dominican blowouts and it took me a long time to just really like get on camera with my naturally curly curly hair like just fresh out the shower just like conditioner in it like kind of like I have it today because I was always so conditioned in oil mm. and gas because sometimes I was the only chocolate drop and I was like okay I want my hair straight and flowing and just blowing in the wind and all of this glamour and driving this perfect car pulling up to this company and then I was like you know what screw the freaking critics screw the naysayers I'm gonna be me regardless and people are always going to have something to say but what you think about yourself is what's going to matter the most and how you carry yourself is going to show up in the world and that's going to be with your verbal skills as well as your nonverbal and your body language because people are going to remember how confident you are people are going to remember how you made them feel and then they're going to tie that to your brand identity okay 
Is this person really behind their brand? Are they doing stuff that is equivalent to their brand mission statement, their core values, and et cetera? Because if not, you're just going to be what I call a FB, a flaky biscuit. And I don't have time for flaky biscuits. Um, <laughs> So that's one thing that I wanted to add there. I'm definitely not a, a subject matter expert like you, Tim, because you've made millions and done all this stuff. But I could tell you what I've learned from my experience being a employee to being an entrepreneur to really learning about myself and what makes me happy, what makes me tick, and now how I am leaving an imprint in order to drive an impact because we're all mm -hmm. here to be world changers. But unless you know who you are and what your purpose and what your mission is, you're going to fall victim to what the world and society wants you to be. Love that. Love that. And I would, I would just challenge that you are an expert. There's a quote. I can't remember who the quotes are. I wish I could, but it's, it goes something like, uh, of every man I've ever met in some way, they are my superior in which I can learn from them. And the idea is, is that everyone you meet, whether it's the janitor or the CEO or whomever, they have something to give. If you allow that, that open communication, if you allow that, you know, if you're, if you're collaborative in your thoughts, not closed off, then you'll, you're, you're going to learn from everyone. And it's, sometimes it's good lessons. Sometimes it's bad lessons, but the openness to, to absorb and take. So I, I would say you do definitely, you have a ton of value to give and share. And I, um, yeah, it's cool. Something Amazing. And one other thing that I want to ask you, Tim, is there anything else that I did not ask you that you think would add value to the conversation based on your life, what you have seen and endured or e-commerce or social media monetization that would just really give value to the audience before we jump into the CTA segment? Um. Oh, I think, I think, I think we're good. I, I, um, I think the biggest thing like for entrepreneurs that are on here, people that are, that are trying to, to move forward, give yourself permission to fail, realize that that's a part of it. This is expect failure and have an adaptation mentality. So like when you run into adversity, when you run into things that are, uh, you know, uh, they're learning experiences, right? Look at everything like a learning experience and, and have the ability to be refined versus defined as things are thrown your way and that is the ticket to doing that long term and refining your processes and yourself and your systems and becoming you know uh, worth your goal that you're going after and hitting like you're, you're gonna yeah, you'll get there a little consistency so that's what I would share Amazing. Now let's jump into the CTA, which is our call to action part of the segment. So mm -hmm. what is your call to action for our audience once they listen to this segment? And some are going to be listening and some are going to be watching the video. Uh, well, I, if you'd like to connect with me, if you uh, maybe you're building an app, maybe you're stuck somewhere as a startup or somebody that's experiencing trouble with an existing system in a business and, and you want to consult or get a get a quote on how that could be fixed or, or you want to, you know, ash something out, brainstorm together. You can get in touch with me at timbrandian.com. Um, that's where all my social media handles are at. Um, that should be in this podcast as well. So you'll be able to click that. And uh, yeah, if you're a creator, if you're somebody that is, that is looking to monetize your personal brand and audience, um, maybe, you know, you're looking for an alternative to some of the ones out there. You can visit truefans with a Z.com and learn more there. And then I'll give uh, Miss Genesis access so you can, can hit her up to gain entry into the channel and she'll be able to kind of gatekeep and bridge that connection as well. So I know I'm just not telling you this Genesis, but I, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And thank you so much, Tim, for just coming on here and just sharing your insight with um, within my ecosystem. So now you are part of it, part of the family here. And for the audience, I really want you to go check out what Tim has going on. He's doing some incredible work and we are better when we come together and collaboration is not the new competition. It's actually the new way of creating synergies. So get at him and make sure you like 
comment, and subscribe. We're on 40 plus platforms. And as the old school song says that I'm going to remix, it's like, where would I be without my supporters? You know, I only think about you. So I want to thank each one of you for helping the podcast make it to the top 2% globally out of 2.8 million podcasts per www.listennotes.com. And it's because of supporters like you that come in to support the guests that I bring on, as well as the overall mission to bring content that is educational, inspirational, and motivational, while we also weave in diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, because it does take all of us coming together to really make an imprint in this world. So until the next episode, next guest, peace, love, and lots of blessings. YOLO, you only live once, and I challenge you to take some self-inventory to level up in all areas of your life.